So we're here with Clay and Clark from Bergstrom Skaggs and they've brought some of their fleet in to talk about carbides or do you guys prefer Skaggs? It depends if you're north of the border or south of the border. <laughs> I suppose, right? <laughs> so maybe start the conversation with your carbide specifically, the Bergstrom Skaggs product, because it's more than just a piece of steel with a chunk of carbide welded in it. So what makes your product a little different than some of the others that are out there? So some of the immediate set-asides uh, that kind of puts us out in our own world is we use a very different, more robust host bar to begin with. We also marry that up with a single point and a triple point. So really what puts us out in a world all to our own is the three separate pieces of carbide uh, mounted to the single host bar. Yeah. Um, and then the added components that come with it. Um, every set of bars that go out from us uh, gets a ski saver mm -hmm. um, and it also gets shimmed. Um, and you can shim conventionally, which is we've always done with a conventional shim kit, and now we're integrating uh, pre-shimmed rubbers that you know are an add-on to the kit as well. Okay, so let's start with the triple points. What's the advantage of going to a triple point carbide rather than the more traditional single point that's running right up the center of that host bar? So in a straight line, it gives you six cutting surfaces. And depending upon which machine we're riding with, there's about a 12 to a 14 degree rule on those skis, be it that you keep your skis on the ground. Mm -hmm. So it always gives you two cutting surfaces on each ski, whether you're turning left or right on that roll. One in the center and one on the outside, one in the center and one on the inside. Now let's just double back for a second on the good and ugly stuff. That is a more traditional wear bar, correct? Absolutely, so same robust um, host bar. Same uh, accessories go with it. It just comes with one single piece of carbide like you would see in a conventional setup versus the triple points is what we tend to move more of. And I know there's no way to really say how long a set of carbides you're gonna wear. If you're in perfect snow conditions all the time, every day for every mile on the trail, these things are gonna last forever. But what typically out of a normal winter with a proper, more robust bar like you've got with Bergstrom's? Average around 8,000 K to a set of bars. Um, we have guys that can get considerably more than that, um, depending upon where they ride and how they ride. Mm -hmm. um, but we like to say somewhere between seven and 8,000 K, be it that it's in conventional riding situations. Yeah, now we've kind of gone through uh, your product list so far, and we've got three of your sleds here that are all sort of outfitted with the Bergstrom products, but we've got one sled that we need to work on, Correct. which is a pretty spicy sled. So uh, maybe let's regroup and we'll work on the 850R um, turbo. Competition. Competition. So yeah. it's got the, the boost juice in the back and uh, it's definitely gonna need some grip up front. So Absolutely. let's work on that next. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, so Clay, you're gonna do the installation of the Bergstrom products, both the good and ugly, or are we gonna put triple points on this turbo wire? We're gonna do both. both? We're gonna run uh, eight inch triples down the middle, and we're gonna look at doing a four inch good and ugly on the outside mm -hmm. on this particular ski, which is the Pilot X ski. Yeah. We're gonna couple that with the pre-shimmed rubber, which we'll get into once we start doing the install, and I'll show you how that goes in as well. All right, well, let's go through it. So to install the outside carbide, the yep. good and ugly, doesn't look like we do have to drill some holes, but all the provisions are there for it. Pretty much, and one thing that I've noticed on the Pilot X that they've started to do here, um, they've actually put little kind yeah. of pilots, little so dimple, to speak, so that you, you know where to kind of sail that drill bit through, Yeah. which we're going to do um, and put that four inch on the outside for this particular sled. Nice. I was gonna say, I do have a hammer. We use what we can use. <laughs> that is our eight inch triple point. And again, we have our ski saver that we're gonna put in there. Yeah, so you can really see how that gets a little bit taller carbide profile. Absolutely. And that is going to wear away, which yep. you expect it to wear away, but I'd rather have that little chunk of UHMW plastic going away than a $600 ski. In that neighborhood, yeah. Yeah. Um, it pretty much ruins your weekend pretty quick when you have to put a new ski on. Yep. Just making sure. So that's the eight inch in. Mm -hmm. and we'll go ahead and we'll drill the outside edge, put the uh, the four inch in. Sounds good. Make it a complete package. Well done. It's awesome to drill holes in a sled that was worth over $30,000. Even though it's just a ski. Beauty. Nice. The next step is the shims. Correct. So we have two different types of shimming. Um, this is your OEM rubber here. Uh, what we would normally do is we would offer our Gen 1 shimming, which is components made of the same plastic as your ski, which would fill in these back portions and 
make it level at the back. Mm -hmm. Normally what would happen is these plugs would pop into here, both of them, which would fill up those gaps and making that more of a flat surface. Yeah, and more rigidity too, because it's not as rubber to be Correct. able to compress. Makes it a little bit more of a sturdy back end on it. Mm -hmm. Autopilot X, when they redesigned the skis, these particular shims don't sit in there comfortably where they'll stay. They want to start and kind of slop around. So our way of fixing that is our pre-shimmed rubbers. And this is where we're moving into. We're slowly doing away with these and we want to move into these pre-shimmed. These are high impact polyurethane. They're mm -hmm. good for uh, upwards of 10,000 miles. It just pops in there. Simple as that. Simple as that. No, no, it's working right there. Voila. Just like that. Simple, easy peasy. And again, it's hard to tell with this, but from the side profile, the ski that your hand's on right now is yeah, I mean, on a downward angle, whereas this one is. Yeah, you can see it. The ski tip is probably with the sledge sort of in the air here and, and no weight on it. That ski tip's probably three or four inches higher than this one. Correct. So, and the ski can still come up nicely. Yeah. But we just don't want it going down. Make sure everything is snug, tight, good to go before you hit the snow. Drive it home. <laughs>